In March, the United States reached an incredible new record. 18%. 18% of all electricity generated in the United States came from solar and wind. That, my friends, is a new record. Clean energy, my friends, is coming right now. In fact, it's already here on a massive scale, a scale that I don't think anyone is truly aware of. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel on the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. So what happened in 2021 that no one seems to be talking about? Well, wind and solar generated 10% of global electricity across the entire planet. 10% across the entire freaking planet. Well, how long do you think it's going to take to get to 20%? I predict it won't be that long. In fact, I predict it won't be that long to get to 100%. I've been known to be crazy. However, I don't think this is as crazy as it sounds. 50 countries, 50 countries get more than a tenth of their power, more than, not under, 50 countries get more than a tenth of their power from wind and solar sources, according to research from EMBA, a climate and energy think tank. As the world's economies rebounded from the COVID-19 pandemic in 2021, demand for energy soared. In fact, it grew at a record pace. This saw a surge in coal power, rising at the fastest rate since 1985, which sounds terrible in fact you know who it's most terrible for the idiots who invested in these coal power plants because if you look at the cost declines <laughs> who would have done this these guys are just dead set morons if you look at the cost declines of battery right batteries especially like look at the cost declines of LF, lithium ion phosphate energy storage they're so much cheaper than what batteries were only two years ago when we're only using, right? When we're only using ternary batteries, which cost about double. But think about this, right? Within a few years, we're gonna have super low cost lithium iron phosphate batteries, plus sodium batteries, which are even lower cost, according to CATL, the world's largest battery manufacturer. They're gonna be 30% less in price. Then look at the incredible cost declines in solar and wind generation over the last 20 years. Massive, massive cost declines. It won't be very long before it's going to cost more to simply run these ridiculous coal-fired power plants than it will be to actually build out a new renewable energy plant. Of course, it depends on where you live based on which energy would suit your country better. I mean, obviously, Africa, Australia, Southeast Asia, we have a boatload of sun. Solar is perfect for us. Depends on where you live. But renewable energy is coming in a big way and all these idiots who invested in these new coal fire plants, they are going to lose billions. I'm not just making this up. This is not my opinion. There is numerous articles on the internet right now from incredibly well-researched authors saying exactly what I just said. These coal power plants need to run at a minimum of 75% capacity in order to not make a loss. And by the way, most of the world's coal power plants right now don't run at more than 75% capacity. Put two and two together. What's going to happen? Well, industry experts say that billions of dollars of investments into these coal-powered-generated power stations will be lost within the next decade. And suck it, is what I say to them. Suck eggs. Anyway, getting back to this crazy surge in energy needs since basically since everyone came out of lockdown, research shows that the growth in the need for electricity last year was the equivalent of adding a new India to the world's grid. That's crazy. However, solar and wind and other clean energy sources actually generated 38% of the world's electricity in 2021. For the first time, wind turbines and solar panels generated 10% of the total. However, the share coming from wind and solar has actually doubled since 2015 when the Paris Climate Agreement was signed. I personally don't think that has much to do with it. I think it's more about market forces. I could be wrong though. The fastest switching to wind and solar took place in the Netherlands, 
Australia and Vietnam. Well done, Australia and the Netherlands and Vietnam. Well done. Congratulations. All three have moved a tenth of their electricity demand from fossil fuels to green sources in the last two years. The Netherlands is a great example of a more northern latitude country, proving that it's not just where the sun shines, it's also about having the right policy environment that makes the big difference in whether solar takes off, said Hannah Broadbent from Ember. Now, can you imagine how much more efficient solar panels are in Australia versus the Netherlands? I mean, we should be using, I think at least 50% of our energy should be coming from solar right now, considering we're one of the sunniest countries on the face of the earth and about 80% of our country is just desert. There's nothing there. It's used for nothing. It's useless. You just have camels roaming around everywhere, just doing nothing but breeding and making more camels. I mean, seriously, it makes sense. Vietnam, crazy. They saw spectacular growth, particularly in solar, which rose by over 300% in one year. In the case of Vietnam, there was a massive step up in solar generation, and it was driven by feed-in tariffs, money the government pays you for generating electricity, which made it very attractive for households and for utilities to be deploying large amounts of solar, said Dave Jones, Ember's global lead. What we saw with that was a massive step up in solar generation last year, which didn't just meet increased electricity demand, but it also led to a fall in both coal and gas generation. Despite the growth in renewable energy, and the fact that some countries, like Denmark, now get more than 50% of their electricity from wind and solar, coal power also saw a remarkable rise in 2021. A large majority of the demand for electricity of the increased demand in 2021 was met by fossil fuels with coal-fired electricity rising by 9%, its fastest rate since 1985. Now, the irony is, it was only a few years ago that I was reading articles left, right, and center everywhere, talking about how the biggest coal companies in the US had all gone bankrupt within the space of a few years. I can see similar things playing out into the future. Much of the rise in coal use was in Asian countries, including China and India, but the increase in coal was not matched by gas use, which increased globally by only 1%, indicating that rising prices for gas have made coal a more viable source of electricity. Now, fortunately, the price of coal and gas continues to go up. This is a pretty good reason, right, for why electricity systems, well, they're going to have more renewable energy because prices go up for these dirty fossil fuels and prices for renewables are continuing to come down. Researchers say that despite the coal resurgence in 2021, major economies, including the US, UK, Germany and Canada are aiming to shift their grids to 100% carbon-free electricity within the next 15 years. Another thing that's going to benefit us in this transition happening is the unfortunate war in Ukraine. The war in Ukraine could push electricity sources that don't depend on Russian imports of oil and gas to accelerate. I mean, obviously, Germany, for one, rely heavily on on Russian oil and gas. Now, the more solar, the more wind, the more battery storage they have, the less they have to rely on Russia for their energy needs. So that could accelerate the transition to renewables this year. Wind and solar have arrived, and they offer a solution out of the multiple crises that the world is facing, whether it's a climate crisis or the dependence on fossil fuels. This could be a real turning point said Hannah Broadbent, one of the authors of the study. Now, I'll put a link in the description below to Ember's Global Electricity Review. You can check that out yourself if you want. Essentially, the news is good. Things are getting better. The world will definitely be using far less fossil fuels in 2030 than what it's using now. Thank you for watching. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.